Now this, as you already know, is the Halloween card that the Zodiac Killer sent to Paul Avery. Changed his name to Avery Lee so that Lee would be in his last name since Frank Morris's middle name is Lee. Frank Morris was a devil worshiper. He did seances and he include people, included people into his seances and then killed them later. I think Donna Lass was some type of a sacrifice for one of his uh, seances that he did up there in Lake Tahoe. Now, he did say that this line, these lines, indicated that this skeleton was still alive, as opposed to the other skeleton who's on the other side of this card, who is not moving because it's dead, and it has a cracked skull. Okay, now, some of the other things I wanted to bring out to you, he said there's a significant date in here. If you look at this and read it backwards, he told me, read it backwards, what do you see? And I said, well, it says 611. And I go, okay, what's that? And I go, I don't know, 62. And he goes, well, yes, that's a, there's a 62 in there. That's part of the date. And I go, he goes, what else can 11 mean? And I go, I don't know, 11. And he goes, right, could be 11. So there's a significant date. And I go, well, what date? It doesn't make any sense. And he goes, well, just remember that. You know, you may figure it out later on in life or something. Well, I did. Okay, and one more thing I wanted to bring your attention to. I think you can see it here. That is a briefcase. If you look closely, there's a red bomb inside the briefcase. That has to do with the Dan Cooper jump along with this airplane in here. And he said, if you ever try to talk to somebody about this, you're going to have a time frame discrepancy. And I said, what do you mean by that? And he goes, well, you're just going to remember that. There's a time frame discrepancy because there's things in here, clues to things that were going to happen in the future that hadn't happened yet. And I think that's what he was talking about. When he sent this card, he actually hadn't made the Dan Cooper jump yet, but he had already planned it, was planning it. He told me when he was talking to me about the jump that that's not something you just do overnight, that he spent a long, long time planning it, probably about a year. And this was actually drawn before he did the jump. These two blue dots had to do with water because he was planning on jumping over water. His idea was to land in a lake or a river because he thought it would be a softer landing with the parachute and less chance of him getting hurt. But it was so dark that night with the storm he couldn't see anything so he just jumped. And I've told you a lot of things about this. That's can look at one of my other videos to see that. There's significance in the blue tips to the fingers. There's also two blue um, patches down here which I think have to do with uh, water because he told me that he threw this briefcase into a lake. That's why they never found it, the bomb. But he also said that he flushed it down the toilet. Now the significant date in here, I recall he told me, what is this? And I said, it's a six. And he goes, okay. And he goes, and what is this? And I go, well, it's two fingers. And he goes, right, so it could be a two. And I go, yeah, six, two. And he goes, right, it's a date, but you have to read it backwards. The whole thing has to be read backwards. And he goes, what else can two fingers be? And I go, well, it could be one, one. And he goes, right, one, one is 11. And I go, okay. So he tells me that uh, there's a significant date in there if you read it backwards. I didn't know what it was, but now I do. And that significant date is 6-11-62. Now look again, 6-11-62. And guess what date that is? That's the date that Frank Morris and the Anglin brothers escaped from Alcatraz. And it was within that year that they showed up in Florida, Tampa, Florida, where I lived, Swimming in the creek, you can see it in my Six Mile Creek video. And they built a dam, they killed a boy down there, they tried to take me out and I escaped from them again. It's That's all in my Six Mile Creek video. Uh, 
there'll be a card on here that you can click on and find your way to that video. The 14, I've told you before, that was his prison number, AZ1441. He also got a 14-year prison sentence in Alcatraz, and that was his prison number at Alcatraz, AZ1441. Um, you have the date. Also, he said that these three fingers indicated the three people who were involved, and I said involved in what? And he goes, well, just three people that are involved, three, three guys. And I go, well, okay, so who was it? Well, I'm not going to tell you. Well, he's telling, he, he was talking about Frank Morris, John Anglin, Clarence Anglin, the three escapees from Alcatraz, who were part of this triad that I showed you previously of the triangle in the nose, the triangle in the feet, and the triangle that all three of them make when you look at them together. And he said there were triangles, there were different triads, and they meant different things. This one was about Alcatraz. There's a picture of the Alcatraz Island in there. This big one was him and the Anglin brothers. And then in 63 was when they went from Florida because we had a police officer there who lived in our neighborhood who was closing in on them, who suspected that they were the escapees from Alcatraz because they had these hand signals they would give each other when they were breaking into places. They could talk to each other from a distance and that's something that the police knew about the Anglin brothers and Frank Morris. And he was closing in on them, so I think they took off and went back to California. I'm going to go home in a couple of months, back to Tampa, Florida, and hopefully I can find that officer, if he's still alive, and the one that I reported having known and met Frank Morris in, in Mexico. I reported to a police officer with the Tampa Police Department, and hopefully I can find him and interview him so that you'll believe that I'm telling you the truth and if you don't I don't want to be rude but I almost don't care because I really am telling you the truth and the reason I'm telling you is because I want the world to know how this killer deceived everyone and even in his death continues to deceive everyone today this is not about me this is about you okay I wanted to show you something I remembered about the feet there's the triangles again I told you about that but the toes in particular, he told me, you know, what do you see here? And I go, well, it's kind of weird because the big toe is not where it's supposed to be. And he goes, it's not, it's in the middle. And I, if you look over here, you can see that big toe is where it's supposed to be. And I, he said, why do you think it would be there? And I go, I don't know. And he goes, well, think about the hand. Let's talk about the hand. Forget the foot. When is the middle finger bigger than the rest of the fingers? And I go, I don't know, like when you do that. And he said, yes, exactly, and that's what's going on right there. And I go, what do you mean? He goes, I'm flipping off the authorities. He's shooting a bird at the police with this card. That's what that means. Now, there's also significance and letters and codes in these lines in the toes. I do recall that his initials are in here. F, L, and if you look at all three of those together, it's an M. More things in there. So that's Frank Lee Morris. There's significance in the fact that this foot is split in the middle. I believe that there's significance in this ankle being disjointed. Maybe one of them had an ankle problem or they broke somebody's ankle. I don't know. But that's just a few of the things that I've remembered about the uh, Zodiac Killer's Halloween card that may help you to understand. And here we are with the secret pal again. He wanted everybody to know that he was going to be your friend right before he killed you.